Yo, what is going on everyone in the XRP community? Hope you guys are having yourselves a fantastic day today as usual today. And you might be able to tell through watching to the end of this video today, we are no longer going to be doing videos the regular way by just hitting start recording, opening up a couple Chrome tabs and calling it a video. Nah, we're going to start putting some more effort into it. We're going to start editing, making things more streamlined, simple, straight to the point and quick. Let's go ahead guys. Before we get into what the title is talking about today, let's go ahead and take a look at the Bitcoin chart because cryptocurrency is on the uptrend today and you got to see this Bitcoin chart right here. Bitcoin is in a really interesting formation here. We have a nice solid curved uptrend with continuing higher lows and we have a huge gap all the way up to $31,393 Bitcoin that must be filled. As you guys know, the markets are never satisfied. They are always trying to find an equilibrium to be happy, but they can never get there. It's never satisfied. It always has to move in waves. I am preparing for, in honestly, the next few days here, maybe to the next week or two, Bitcoin has to skyrocket to about $31,000 a coin because we have a major gap here on the left side uh, going from 24800 to 31000 and this will carry XRP like crazy. So make sure, do keep your eyes on this Bitcoin formation here. Might look at this as a potential swing trade. I don't know, but all I know is that the charts are pointing to Bitcoin must claim this region. XRP kind of doing a similar thing as Bitcoin. However, Bitcoin's price action looks a little bit stronger. But if Bitcoin gets that breakout and fills the gap up to 31400 we should see XRP at $0.64 cents at the exact same time that Bitcoin reaches to 33000 All right, now... Let's get into the news of today. This is all going to be based off of one report out of China. Came out, I think, around a week and a half ago. Pretty groundbreaking statements. Let's go ahead and read through this new report. Here is the first of the four pages of this report. This is coming from the Bank of China on July 25th, 2022. Okay, and we do know Ripple has some connections to China. There's a company called Lian Lian Pay, who is the third largest payment provider in China that is working with Ripple. I do not know right now if they are RippleNet powered because it's very difficult considering the government they're coming from. Um, but we do know Lian Lian Pay is working with Ripple. So check this out here. U.S. fintech company Ripple is making cross-border payments. This is research on the development prospects of the field. This is very, very new. This is not from a few years ago. This is from very recently. Cross-border payments have always been at the heart of modern economic activity. And today, the global cross-border payment field is undergoing unprecedented changes. Fintech companies have emerged as a strong emerging force. Ripple, as one of the leaders, one of the leaders, not just a participant, but a leader. The core business is to use the Ripple network to process cross-border payment. And remittance before we go on to the next page i want you guys to know this is a translation from the you know mandarin language so we got to keep that in mind considering what they're saying you know the english might not be a hundred percent you know correct or accurate but we should have pretty much a solid translation but just so you can keep in mind this is not like initially written in english this was initially written in mandarin so we must just keep that in mind as we keep reading Fintech has undoubtedly injected new vitality into the cross-border payment field. Traditional payment established powerhouse SWIFT is positive. The pace of innovation is accelerating, and new competitors such as Ripple are emerging in the emerging payment space. On the one hand, Ripple needs to cooperate with SWIFT in terms of business, technology, etc. for common development. On the other hand, Ripple needs to find the right position and form a differentiated advantage in order to be in the cross-border payment market where the tigers are in the front and the soldiers are in the back growing in. Or, well, there are tigers in the front and soldiers in the back growing in. Again, this is not originally written in English, so it's going to be a little bit weird, but I think we can understand what they're saying here. We've talked about this a lot in the past. I've personally made videos like saying... You know, I was like 17, 18 years old, like, oh, no, Ripple's not going to work with Swift. And then like a year later, I'm like, oh, Ripple's going to work with Swift. This looks interesting because new documents keep coming out. But it's very interesting how the Bank of China, who's probably one of the largest banks in the entire world, um, they're saying that Ripple needs to cooperate with Swift. We have always theorized the, you know, 
the only way Swift could stay alive is by essentially just they run their normal business model, but then start using XRP as like their last ditch effort to even stay relevant in this, you know, digital age of Web3 technology, right? Very interesting how this is coming out from the Bank of China that the Ripple needs to cooperate with Swift. Ripple and Swift promote each other and develop together. Swift has a wide range of customers and business bases and has formed a relatively sound and complete anti-financial crime and compliance mechanism during the development process. It provides a variety of solutions and its powerful data management mechanism protects the identity and transactions of participants and obtains supervision uh, approved. However, the rapid development of financial technology has placed more and more requirements on Swift. Constrained by its traditional system structure, Swift remittance lacks timeliness and the cross-border payment information chain is long, which is easy to cause information loss, which is why, you know, you could, like, if you initiate a cross-border transaction through Swift, you could ask the sending bank, hey, where's the money right now? They will literally tell you, we don't know. Like, we know it's going there, but we don't know where it is. The emergence of Ripple triggered the catfish effect, which has caused a ripple in the field of cross-border payments. I like that one. Swift accelerates the pace of innovation and change, Launch new products such as Swift GPI Geo and will promote the ISO uh, 20,022 message format by the end of 2022. Very, very interesting and intriguing. Again, we knew about Swift GPI a few years ago. I remember when the FUD articles were coming out and, you know, crypto websites were like, oh my God, Swift GPI, the Ripple killer. And I think we learned that Swift GPI is quite literally exactly the same as Swift. They do something slightly different, but at the end of the day, they are still back at the square one walled gardens waiting days for transaction but very interesting how swift gpi slash go is also promoting the iso uh, 222 message format which xrp is compliant with let's get to the next page here and here is where we see why i think china will like RippleNet and xrp considering it's a decentralized level playing field solving the problem of neutrality becomes the key to future development Western countries have taken SWIFT as an important tool to implement financial sanctions, and the future cross-border payment system is whether neutrality can be maintained will become one of the key trade-offs in consideration for users. Ripple, as Native American, a fintech company, is inevitably subject to the influence of US regulators as a commercial bank. It should be carefully considered considering in the absence of effective means to avoid the risk of SWIFT sanctions, whether using Ripple will step into another American trap. And again, guys, we got to keep in mind, this is from China. Um, not really a, like good allies of the U.S. And they are talking about here that SWIFT is being used as an international sanction tool. One of the reasons why I think some countries would like cryptocurrency like XRP is because it's completely neutral. Like, I'm not saying I personally want bad guys to be able to trade money around, but this is where kind of a dark corner of utility kind of comes in where the blockchain is not going to censor anybody. No matter what the transaction is used for, no matter what its purpose is, the blockchain will not sanction off any transactions. This is where, as you can see, certain countries may really like this feature. But at the same time, they're also saying that because Ripple is a Native American or Ripple is an American company, um that Ripple could step into an American trap. Because that's the thing. Ripple is an American company. However, headquarters is in San Francisco, but they have office locations all across the globe. Europe, United Arab Emirates, India, Toronto, London. They've got offices everywhere. Okay. So I think it's China being a little bit, or the Bank of China being a little bit eager here to say that this could be, they could fall into the American trap and start sanctioning. I do not think RippleNet would ever sanction a certain country or a bank. I mean, I don't know. That's 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 kind of like politics at this point. I don't really want to talk about it too much. But you could see where it's much harder to sanction off people with XRP and RippleNet than it is Swift. Because yes, Ripple is an American company, but Ripple could leave the U.S. at any time. Ripple doesn't always have to be an American company. But I am looking forward to the Ripple IPO. Let's get to the last page here. Circulating currency stability management to ensure payment security. The Ripple coin launched by Ripple has a tendency to become a, a speculative tool. Well, Ripple coin launched by Ripple, uh, I mean, it's XRP. And XRP wasn't created by Ripple. 
like it's I don't know it's weird to talk about because XRP was created before the company Ripple and then later on the same people that created XRP essentially found Ripple the company so I don't know well, coming from like a, a translation I mean it I think this is kind of the best they could do here the Ripple coin launched by Ripple has a tendency to become a speculative tool which threatens financial security and social stability certain potential risks to maintain the stability of Ripple. Um, but the thing is, though, is like, yeah, you can always bring up the argument of, oh, it's a speculative token. It goes up and down. It's super volatile. But yeah, three seconds in XRP versus five days in a foreign fiat currency. I guarantee you there's much more volatility five days in a foreign fiat currency than, you know, three seconds on XRP. I mean, what, there's 86,400 seconds in a day times five? You're looking at like, what, 300,000 seconds versus three seconds. Much less risk in XRP. On the one hand, a stable exchange rate is formed by anchoring various legal currencies in reality, such as the US dollar, a basket of currencies, or a combination of commodities. On the other hand, it's necessary to ensure that the currency has a stable support, preferably a one-to-one -one reserve, and the safety and liquidity of the reserve must be guaranteed. As it relates to public confidence in the currency, disclosure relevant reserves must be timely and clear and audited. This is where I think the tinfoil hat, you know, all oh, Federal Reserve XRP Fed buyback $50,000 a coin comes in. But um, I think they're just kind of offering a suggestion here saying that XRP should have some sort of one-to-one -one reserve. Now, I'm, I'm really just speculating here, but maybe the Ripple escrow could turn into some kind of reserve one day. I don't know, but I, d I don't think XRP necessarily needs a reserve. Um, yeah, this is kind of hard to talk about because it's just, it's like the whole thing with XRP, Bitcoin, Ethereum, every other cryptocurrency out there, it's all based on faith that it's a good system and it's going to be used. Not necessarily, hey, here's this thing. Let me back it one to one so you guys don't like, you know, get screwed over that kind of thing. Right. So anyways, guys, I, I think this is very interesting coming from the Bank of China saying that Ripple needs to work with Swift. And this is a, quite a high high tier bank here that's making these statements just like what two weeks ago and we do know ripple's got the china connection we made plenty of videos on the channel documenting uh ripple progress over in china it's kind of a tricky one because of how that government works which i don't want to get into about specifically but you guys know what i'm saying um but we do have the third largest payment provider in china currently working with ripple as of a few years ago and before we end the video just a quick little bonus um, not really a good bonus per se, but this is kind of going viral on, you know, financial Twitter these days. Um, so there is an inflation reduction act unleashes a tougher armed IRS. And basically what's happening is, uh, so the Schumer mansion tax bill known as the inflation reduction act, which passed the Senate on Sunday, raises taxes and will give the IRS billions to go into what wall street journal called beast mode. And they are going to hire 87,000 more agents. Um, yeah, you know, I really think that's going to genuinely help inflation. Yeah, attacking the middle class and make sure you siphon every penny out of them. I think that's really going to help inflation. Great job, America. So thank you guys for tuning the video today. Make sure to smash the like, subscribe. Check the links in the description to support the channel. Hit those post notifications for daily videos. And I hope you guys like this new editing format. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I think it's time we put some real effort into the channel. And, um, yeah, I really appreciate you guys tuning in, and I will see you in the next one.